everyone, this is Michael Cohen, the Tech Rabbi, and welcome to another tech tutorial. Today, we're going to talk about Adobe Spark Post, one of the three Adobe Spark apps that I am super into right now because it takes the powerhouse creative possibilities of the Adobe suite of professional design products and it gives access to students as young as five or six. I have seen educators use this in kindergarten classrooms, in first, second, third grade, all the way to college. And one of the things that I just love about it is that they have created amazing features to make the creativity process very simple and straightforward to let you focus on the content. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the features of Adobe Spark Post. I'm going to give you a lesson idea, and I am hoping that you will be inspired to bring this into your classroom and start empowering your students to create incredible content today. So in the Adobe Spark suite of apps, you have a iOS standalone app for each one of the different types of programs. So you have Adobe Spark Post, Adobe Spark Video, and Adobe Spark Pages. No update yet when there will be an Android version available, but once there is, I will definitely put that info out. On the web interface, this will work for MacBook, Apple products, it will work for Chromebooks, and it will work for any PC. That is found at spark.adobe.com. You can find that link in the description below. And the three different apps are all housed under one roof, as you see in the blue plus sign when you click it and it pops up. Now, if you find this video valuable and at the end it gets you inspired to do something great in your classroom, please subscribe to this channel, please like it, and of course share it with someone else that needs to know about these powerful applications. So when you click on post, it brings you to two different types of options. You can start from scratch, or you can actually scroll through and find featured images that are broken down in themes, broken down in the layout size. You see Instagram, Pinterest, 3-4 ratio. And if your students or yourself find a graphic that inspires you, you can click on that and it will make a copy of it for you to remix and make your own. And I love that feature because I don't just think that teachers are short on time, they don't have enough time. So for us to be able to get this into the hands of our students and not worry that 30, 40, an hour would be lost, I think is absolutely incredible and I think is really great as far as features go. But for today's lesson tutorial, I'm going to show you a couple different designs in my post library that I think will be really helpful to give you insights. Now, I want to show you just quickly a keynote slide that I use when I present and introduce Adobe Spark Post at the conferences that I present at. So I use the Story Spine Disney Pixar strategy and I break it into a beginning, middle, and end panel. Three graphics that I think are pretty great for a couple different strategies in the classroom. So the first is students gauging their personal growth. Who am I as once upon a time there was a blank student? Who am I right now at the start of the school year, in the middle of the school year? Every day blank, then one day they went to or one day I did, whatever it is that fits in to your classroom context. Here, it happens to be that the last conference I presented at was NIDA, Nebraska's state ed tech conference. And so it was every day, blank, one day they went to that conference. And then because of that blank until finally blank would be an end of the year reflection. Now, you can take this and you can turn this into a reflection or a assessment for a unit of learning. You can use this for really any type of strategy when you are having the students challenged to present information in three sequential stages. And I just feel like this is so action-packed, so powerful in connecting visual content and colors 
to really promote a deeper understanding or a, d a deeper proof of understanding of information. So enough with the talk, let's start making. So I'm gonna go in, I clicked on one of the designs that I've already created because I just wanna break down the process, adjust it a little bit to show you all the different features that you are able to utilize to create a really powerful image. So the first thing that I did was I found an image that represented the theme that I wanted to present, which was always be a lamplighter. And you can replace images, you can add additional images and actually create, as we'll see in a little bit, some really cool layout functionality. And what you're able to do is you are able to find photos here, whether you add a new photo or replace, you can upload your own photos, you can find free photos or use one of these services that you subscribe to, to put those photos into the content on Adobe Spark Post. So when you find free photos, you can look up, you know, I think when I was looking for this, I was looking up the word, you know, I think it was flashlight, something like that. Here are a couple other really incredible images here. And let's say I decide that I'm gonna go with this image here that has a really powerful, vibrant background. And it's just so interesting to see the types of images that pop up. They are all pretty focused on education. I've yet to find any content that is inappropriate or extremely distracting, but use your discretion. Definitely, if there is a theme that you already have in mind, do a couple searches just to be sure. But so far, I have found pretty great quality photographs and they are all royalty free, which means free for you and your students to use without any concerns of copyright infringement. So if I switch this picture to this picture here, I can start to engage with the content. But let's say I changed my mind. I didn't want to change that photograph. So I click undo and it's right back where I started. And if I say, no, I changed my mind, I go to the redo, right? And you can toggle that back as many stages as edits and movement on the canvas that you created. But to go back to the original image, you can see here that the text that popped up was this color originally. It uses an AI backend to scan all of the colors in the design and pair them so that they contrast and they pop, but they are matching and relevant to the photograph. And I think the original one actually was this colored background, but I think the text was actually a green that was pulled from the photograph. So when you click on the photograph, you're able to scale and to rotate the graphic. You're able to adjust that uh, in whatever way you want and you're also able to adjust some filters as well. Now, if you are looking to add an additional photo or really anything additional, you go over to that plus sign and you click on a photo, you find a new photo, and it will actually create a layout panel for you. So maybe I'm going to click the second picture here and have two of these pictures. Now, this right now doesn't work, but you're able to fix it very quickly. You go down to this layout feature here and you're able to decide what type of layout you would like. So you can click a layout like this and adjust these pictures uh, in a way that works for you. But one of the things that you're able to toggle is the space between the two pictures. Which picture is dominant? Do you wanna have this picture here at the bottom uh, be smaller, be larger, but you're able to adjust all of that and you're actually able to also adjust the uh, color fill as well and you can just have a color background where you would put some text to pop. But for me, I like to keep things simple and I like to challenge the students that I work with to really focus on just a single image. So I deleted the image and as you can see, it didn't delete the section, so you have two feature options there. And once you click that delete, both of them disappear. So I chose to engage with this text box right now by just clicking on it. I can change the size of it. 
and I can adjust it. And you can see here that these are two separate designs here with this icon, but the icon uh, looks like it connects to the design because I use the same color as uh, the background color here in this text box. So you're able to change the font of your design super quick. Amazing, amazing different font choices to really represent whatever style you are looking for. And once again, if you decide, oh, like I changed the font, I don't even remember which font I originally chose, once again, the undo button is your friend. So one of the things that's really powerful about this little type section is you have your primary, but you also have your secondary. And it automatically highlights and once again pulls colors, as you see here, this flower and this color right here are both matching. You're able to click or unclick a part of the text box to emphasize. So I want to emphasize the lamp lighter, but when I think about it, I click on color, I don't want it to be uh, the pink color, let's say. Let's say I want it to be uh, a deep blue color. So one of the things that you're able to do is you're actually able to eye drop from your graphic if it didn't pull a color that you want. So you can click on that and let's say you wanted to use one of the blue shades of the sky here. So you click on that area that you want to highlight, it eye drops it, you click save and you now have the ability to adjust that secondary and that primary. Let's say you wanted to change the font. Maybe lamp lighter needs to be with a really powerful script uh, style, right? Something like that. Now, you just have to be aware that the primary settings are going to many times put themselves onto the secondary settings. And so as you see here, you don't have as many options as the original. So because this capitalize and fit feature, which I really like because it pulls the text all the way to the edge of the text box, is capitalize and fix if you were hoping on creating a graphic that has a really cool font that really is used with lowercase and uppercase, you just have to be aware of that challenge and sort of go with the flow. Like some of these fonts just don't work, right? But maybe this is something that works or maybe you want to go with uh, one of the hand-drawn styles like this one. Wh whatever it is, you decide and you click out and you're good to go. Now, adjusting the text, you're able to adjust the alignment. If that's what you want, you can go you know, this way and that way. I just love the capitalization. You can adjust the spacing between the uh, words between each line. You're able to adjust the opacity. You're able to adjust the order if you have uh, different layers of objects. But at the end of the day, all of this is pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And once again, moving to that color feature, you're able to adjust the colors, but it's not going to affect your secondary color. You're able to go in and change even editing, right, and deciding that as much as I like the gold yellowish background, I really don't like the um, that, that red. I want to adjust the red. Uh, or is more like a burgundy, right? You can adjust it, you can make it even darker, maybe you want it to be black, and you can then save or you can cancel, but you're able to adjust super quickly, and once again, undo is your best friend. So you have your colors, then when you move on to shapes, the shapes, there are a lot of different features here, a lot of different options for you to engage with, and then you can obviously move the padding down here, um, many of these are able to pull in different colors and adjust as follows, but for whatever reason, I like to keep it simple, and so I usually move back to that original square and just really work on layout and imagery to balance and engage with the content together. And the next piece is this style 
It's really cool if you're wanting to get your creative juices flowing. You can engage with the suggestions and you can move it around. And if you're nervous that you don't like and you don't, you don't know how to get back, you just click undo one time and it reverses no matter how many times you scrolled the style uh, remix wheel. So that's a pretty simple breakdown of the types, the typeset, creating your text, creating the colors around it, as well as the imagery. The last and final really cool feature is this icon feature. And you're able to search icons, and I think I searched fire to represent that lamp lighter, and you're able to uh, go through and, and create some pretty uh, incredible graphics, right? So that fire, just to show you, the fire and the telescope were two separate designs, but I turned them into one. So you add the icon, so fire here, let's say this, this fire is, uh, a, is a cooler looking graphic than the one I have already. You can change the color of the icon and it's going to use your suggested colors but then give you all colors to choose from. You can readjust the size here. I'm gonna delete that one and I'm going to uh, select this one right here. So you're able to really collage together and create some pretty powerful representations of information. The saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, does hold true, and it does give your students an incredible opportunity and really an empowering opportunity to dig deep into how imagery can represent and communicate the information that they want to share and that they're responsible for knowing. So that's a rundown of how to use Adobe Spark Post, a lot of the different features, there's a lesson idea that I shared with you as well, and I just hope that I provided value for you in this tutorial. So once again, please subscribe to my channel. I put up video content like this as well as a weekly vlog. I'm also hoping that you can like and share this out because I want to bring value to as many people as I can. And once again, thank you for watching.